Alex Stein, followed by Emma West. <clears throat> Hello to all these white devils. Mayor Rick, you're a white devil. What's going on at our border? Stopping great Haitian cannibals for coming to our country? You should be ashamed of yourself, Rick. We need more Venezuelans. This country was built on the back of immigrants. May I remind you that? Okay? So you guys limiting people in Fort Worth are going to say that, oh, they're going to arrest illegal immigrants. Well, guess what? No, you're not, because guess who I have on the phone? That's right. I have the 46th Vice President of the United States of America, Kamala Harris. Kamala, what do you want to say to these freaks? Listen up, all you Texas politicians, okay? Your time is up. Now, you couldn't unburden what had been. This fight is futile because no human is illegal. All right, they deserve to have access to free health care. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> and free housing, more than the citizens of America, because let's face it, you know, they have had to fight much harder to survive in a white world, you know, filled with white devils. And, you know, as Democrats, we're going to need their vote. <laughs> have you been drinking, Vice President Kamala? J just a little bit. Now, listen, I don't care how much of a dumb racist Governor Abbott is and he tries to fight me. All right, me and Joe, we're, 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 we're going to prevail and we will build back better by building back what we've never built before. Now, this, this great replacement theory, you know, it shall be galvanized and commenced because, you know, think about how this country was built on the backs of slaves because they have community. So it doesn't deserve to be run by white supremacists. Now let's make the border open again. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vice President. Thank you. Please go have a margarita and think of me. Text me. Okay. Bye, babe. All right, that's what I'm saying. A bunch of white devils. We only got one black dude on the whole council, Dennis, and this guy's not even paying attention. Dennis, I'm over here. Wake up, Dennis. Dennis, hey, I'm over here, bud. I'm speaking. You don't like me because I'm white? Well, guess what? I hate me that I'm white. I hate white people. White people are the worst scum of this earth. I love black people. One black people are my life. I love black people. I take off my shirt for you, Dennis. This is the scars. You can whip me. Dennis, this is what I do. Whip me. Whip me. I feel so guilty for being white. I hate being a white man. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Dennis. You won't even look at me. Dennis. I'm right here. I love you, Dennis. I love all black men. I love Michael Jordan. I even like O.J. Simpson. I think O.J. Simpson is not guilty. I love you guys. I'm, I'm Alex Stein. And you guys are a bunch of white devils. Dennis should be the mayor. He should be the president. There's only one black dude. I like the Middle Eastern dude. Abdul, you're cool. I'm a pimp on a blimp. In a west. Yeah, your time is up. Oh, it's up? Yep. Are you the city secretary? Yep. Well, you're not very good at your job, city secretary. You're Thank black. you. If you were black, you'd be better. Emma West, followed by Cynthia Sharp. <sighs> he won't hurt you, Emma. Ooh. You can start your way down. <laughs> Come on down. How many vaccines you got, baby? You be safe. Damn. Ugh. Dennis, I can't believe you've been looking at me the whole time. I'm here fighting for reparations. I'm so proud. I'm aligned with the planes. My grind's so refined. I got no time for no games. Ask yourself why would I make time for you lames? At all costs. Cause I'm a boss. I'm a boss. I'll break them off. Yeah, gotta break them off. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Prime Time with Alex Stein. I'm your host, Alejandro Stein, and like usual, we got a freaking hot one for you tonight. We have Myron Sugarman, the last Jewish gangster, on to tell us about the conflict in Israel and Palestine. But before we get to him, we have to welcome on one of the most dangerous criminals in United States history. His name is Adam Johnson, but you might know him as the Lectern Guy! Hey, Jay, Adam, what the heck, dude? Hey, how you doing, man? Welcome to the show. 
How are you doing? Are we crossing legs? We're crossing legs. Just be yourself. You know, this. I'm on a lot of coffee right now. Double, double caffeinated primetime grind. I see right now, you guys can see that this is your episode of Tim Pool. He's my best friend. And every time you order or drink a little bit of this Casper coffee, you stop Asian hate because Tim's half Korean. <laughs> Did you know that? Yes, he is. Are you pro Asian hate? Or are you? Uh, he's the diversity hire for, for the media. It's good. No, he's not. He's just half Asian. He's not diversity. He's talented on his own. He's not DEI. <laughs> Speaking of DEI, do you, you see that bridge fell? Did you see the bridge that fell? I, I did. I did see the bridge. And fall it was built coming. by all Puerto Ricans. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yes, Jimmy. Did you know that? Show the Jimmy cam. Yes. So my producer, he's allowed to talk. I, that's a penis. Take the penis off. We don't want to get a strike. <laughs> so Jimmy lost access. Jimmy and Brandon have lost access because they've they've gotten a little too lackadaisical. I feel like, and so I want to try to um, like a whore Princeton, right, Jimmy? Well, we can't hear him. I guess he doesn't know how to work the microphone either. <laughs> My point being is, I, I really want to kind of encourage them to be better. You know what I mean? It's important to get the best out of your employees. Well, I'm doing punishment. Like the federal government, they punished you. They did punish me. They did. Did it, did it work? Uh, no, absolutely not. I was moving furniture out in the studio about an hour. Yeah, I know. You already were taking a lector, and that's not... <laughs> Alex, can you hear me on this mic? I can't hear you on the mic. So we yeah. got you. I guess Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy doesn't know how to work the mic anymore. No, I unplugged his mic. Do you want me to plug it oh, back? Oh, no, in? no. Keep his mic unplugged. Okay. Thank God. I like okay. the idea of using yeah. carrots, but maybe you should eat more. What? Maybe I should eat more? Yeah, you were looking like you were rocking like a bee cup in that clip. So you're saying I should eat more? Okay, so now you're making fun of me too. So let's cut off his mic as well. Can we just do that? Uh, come back here you. and turn it off. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. You can just <laughs> boom there. These guys, they work for me. And they don't realize it's the Alex Stein show. You know, it's they funny. were so polite off camera. I know, off camera, they're nice. They'll kiss your ass all day long. And you turn on the camera, and then all of a sudden, they become Johnny talk shit a bunch, you know? They do, they do. Why is that? I think it's because you let them get away with it. They're I know. Thinking. Now, that's right. It's because I let your bitch asses get away with it. Not anymore, mother <laughs> truckers. It's the primetime 99 Alex Stein blip. And I'm going to be a lot like World War II, not the Hitler version. I'm going to be like the Americans that won the war, correct? Yes, for the most part. Yes, except for Operation Paperclip. And we're going to get into Operation Paperclip and the Nazis that we brought over to run NASA and our CIA. But before we get into that, we got to talk about this bridge. What the heck? What do you think happened? Well, I definitely, the video looks sus, and everyone's a professional about bridges the day it comes out. Yes. So there's about 50 threads going on right now. I've seen it, uh, it looks like it does steer into the pylon holding it up. Now, I've heard it's because engines were failing, and it just happened to take off with the currents, and the rudder wasn't working, but it does look like it kind of turns into it. Well, what's weird is, in Tampa, they had a bridge collapse in 1986, and all they did is they, they designed a, a better bridge. But Sunshine Skyway. But I cross the, it all the time. Exactly. It's a great bridge. I've been on it. Love Tampa. We That's where we had our boxing match. We were there. My point is, all they did is they put concrete pillars around the base, so if something did run into it, you'd run into the concrete pillars first. Sure. Very seems like a very simple, you don't, don't have to have an engineering degree to be like, put something that blocks it from hitting the bridge. So when I see this happen, I, I you know, I'm a 9-11 truther. I can't help but think that there's something funny going on. I mean, we are we talking black swan events? It is an election year. Yes. We've seen we've seen the attack in Russia. We I think we had the uh, intelligence from Russia. Nord come out. Stream attack, which mm -hmm. we did more than likely. I mean, don't quote me on that, but Russia came YouTube out today either. and accredited the attack at the, it was the mall, right? Yes. So the U.S. intelligence said they were involved in it. But it's wartime propaganda, so take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, because ISIS doesn't care. Why the hell would ISIS run up in a Russian movie theater? You think ISIS gives a damn? No, absolutely not. And we created ISIS. Now, on a serious note, this is a comedy show, but what you might not realize for the people that are playing at home that are young is the Mujahideen, we actually funded the original seed that ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Taliban, what came from that was a Mujahideen that we gave weapons to to fight the Russians. So we gave them training, we gave them weapons. Those same weapons were used against us in 2001, defending weapons of mass destruction that they did not have. So it's very easy for us to use ISIS as a boogeyman. Yeah, and we understand the government's very good at walking away from projects they start, right? Yes. They definitely are not doing that anymore. No. I mean, I, I just, I, I really do think, though, let's be real. Why did you go to the Capitol? We can only say so much stuff because we don't get the YouTube censors mad at us. But you thought what happened to our government was fraudulent. Is that the best way to describe it? I think, I think questionable is a very good word. And I say questionable because we have strings of theories, strings of evidence. You can present them to lots of people, and people have a 
have an opinion on them as well. They can debunk them. They can say, no, it's this. No, it's that. It's questionable. Mm -hmm. And I think if something is questionable, you should have the right to go ask questions. I agree. But this is, what, this is where it's not questionable, is that you can look me up for all the people that want to look this up because you're saying smart. Donald Trump won all 50 states when it came to in-person voting. That's right. It doesn't matter if it was California or New York. When it came to in-person voting, Donald Trump won all 50, that's right, 50 states. When it came to mail-in ballots, Joe Biden won all 50 states, even the conservative ones like Texas or Florida. So when you have the most mail-in ballots in United States history, it's obvious that there is a possibility for fraud to be more rampant. Absolutely. And if we had any type of committees put together like we did for Russiagate, if we had spent the resources looking into the election, the claims, right, from, from the mainstream media, maybe we would have found something. But maybe that's why we didn't look. Well, let's look into this bridge. Let's play this video because I do think it's very weird where you see there's some sparks and some flames near the lights. And obviously there's probably show some... You, I did show the video if you go back. A, br a boat crashed here, but you can see dynamite being let off at every single point. I'm going to do it again. What are those flashes? Here, here, charges, boom. And you play those games, those bridge games, where you build a bridge and try to drive something over, like tower attack. Have you ever seen those bridge games? Uh huh. Just the way it fell, it just it looks inorganic. I don't know why, but this here. Let's has it a building seven moment, you know? It is. It feels like building seven because come on, like that bridge is just going to collapse that easily. I know that's a huge ship, and that ship in the Belgium or the Netherlands or something had been in another accident, so that dolly ship doesn't have the best track record when it comes to safety. But nonetheless, I would think that that bridge would be more stable than that. But Alex, we got a we got a soundbite from the governor. If you want to hear that, let's hear it. And uh, Paul, we felt Secretary of Transportation. Just a few updates uh, since our meeting this morning. Um, the uh, the crew that was out there working was basically repairing potholes, just so you understand that had nothing to do with a structural issue at all at the, at the, on the facility. Um, at this time, one person has been uh, rescued, and so far, and our <clears throat> continue our efforts continue in, in terms of that. Um, engineers are on site right now, determining both some of the structural issues, obviously some of the debris field, and we'll start to work that, but we'll work hand in hand with the NTSB before we take any further action in that area. Dude, we can't get a crew to fix a pothole ever, and there just happened to be a <laughs> pothole crew at two in the morning, you know, or four in the morning when this happened. What I can't reconcile is, when these things happen, we always say it's early, you know, like we shouldn't speculate, we should, we should listen, we should read. The FBI after two hours said, nah, there was definitely no foul play investigation over just like they found yeah. two, two terrorist passports before they could find the black box on 9-11 so i mean and then waco dude, a lot of people don't even remember waco with david koresh and david koresh wasn't the best guy ever he had some guns this and that but they didn't need to you know light them on fire with a church full of children inside of it i've been to the memorial i have uh, i went there last time i was down here and uh there is more right outside they have all the children's name who were children like under 12 years yeah. old there were over a dozen of them that were burned alive and that was Janet Reno, who now looking back, well, I don't, we can't, you don't want to misgender or anything. Janet Reno's definitely a hot lady, hot, hot, hot babe. Um, right up there with Pelosi. Uh, well, what do you think about Nancy Pelosi's husband? He's kind of, he's kind of weird, isn't he? Uh, he definitely has a, uh, a unique selection in the friends that he keeps. He does. Yeah, in he's his house. A nudist. At two o'clock in the morning with hammers. Very, you know, corn blow up suits. And speaking of hanging out at two in the morning with weird people, what about <laughs> Puffy? <laughs> Puffy, you see that Puff Daddy? He definitely killed Biggie. And now he's getting his comeuppance. He is now on the hook for potentially sex trafficking and drug trafficking crimes. Man, this is actually probably the first person in that industry that's ever happened to. <laughs> this is definitely not a, a concurrent thing we see happening every six months. And there's a connection to Prince Harry. Is that correct or is it Prince William? Uh, there's a lawsuit that names him Harry. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. not good. And, and Harry's with Meghan Markle, like that. I don't know. There's just, like, there's just something weird going on there. Okay, let's play that thought. Holmes, the rapper and music executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. He got some shots of a few people coming out of the home. Those people have been detained. Now, we're trying to still connect the dots. We do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information mm. from. We were actually the first ones here That's with fishy. about... Different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say, 
less than 10 minutes ago. We got here even before the crime scene tape came up. Of course, so, uh, they're already the there on the scene. What luck. The they didn't get Tony tipped off. Right now to the right. You'll see one of those bearcats and law enforcement. On the other side of those bushes, basically, is that home that is That's what I'm saying, dude. Film, the FBI obviously told them, hey, we're going to go run this raid. I mean, give me a break. Someone's going to leak the TV in Will Smith's sex tape. Do you think that? Okay, here, well, that's enough of this video. Do you think, uh, you know, supposedly Will Smith, one of his co, whatever, his old, um, like, bodyguard type guy did say mm -hmm. that he walked in on Will Smith getting uh -huh. woo-hoo in uh -huh. the boo-hoo. <laughs> Railroaded. That, yeah. Did you ever see that happen in prison? No, actually. So, <laughs> I was the one doing it. You, you were doing it, yeah. established dominance that's what, right I See, that's what a lot of people don't realize is when you go into prison, you have to go in there and you're supposed to bang the first twink that you can get. Yeah, right? you don't beat up the first guy. You, you have to have shame him. You have sex with him. Yes, yeah. you have to shame him. No, actually, it was actually very frowned upon in the place I was at. Good. There was a, uh, there was a guy who was found, um, older gentleman, he was found taking care, relieving himself, okay. probably two o'clock in the morning it above happened. a sleeping younger male. Yeah. And uh, there may or may not have been a pillow party. And a pillow party is where they put soap in a pillow uh, case and they hit you repeatedly like uh -huh. a full metal jacket? Oh, they took all his commissary for weeks, didn't have a spot in the TV room. Oh, because he, was... he cranked it. Mm -hmm. I would figure that there's guys cranking it all day long in there. Well, Shower time. Oh, that's where they crank it? Sure, go in there. But as far as like, Did why was that? Did you crank it ever while you were there? No, no, so when I got out, I was very Come excited on. to see my wife. <laughs> that's good, the fact that you have that control. Well, I came home and uh, my mom was, my mommy got to take the kids for like 20 solid no! minutes. No, you yeah. said mom, get the kids out of here. This is a real man. Wow, we gotta clap for that too, guys. <laughs> poor wife though, I'm sure you probably put her through a lot of pain when you got back, you had what, you did 70 days? It was uh, 71 days in federal, yeah. Gosh, you had a lot of built-up testosterone. But in, in a way, though, this is why I, I love you. I don't just like you, I love you, because you have every reason to play the victim. You very easily could. I mean, you were the face of January 6th other than Jacob Chansley. You were kind of like the funny face, you know? Like, the, your picture was so viral, right? I mean... Yep, still gets memed. It, obviously, and it's going to be like, it's going to be in history books for years, you know, after our deaths, but you still had to go to federal prison and have your life turned upside down. And you don't play the victim, which I respect so much because I would be the biggest victim. I'd be like, oh, whoa, it's me. And you're not. So why are you able to do that? How are you able to have a positive outlook for such a negative thing? It's, uh, it's twofold. Um, now I can kind of look at it and say, I didn't get it half as bad or God, even 5% even as bad as some of these guys who are getting completely railroaded 17 years, mm -hmm. 20 years for not even being there. And I can look at that and say, you know, I. I didn't serve that much time. I didn't. It could have been a lot worse. But initially, it was the strength of my family. It was the love that we have. It was the, um, I came home and you know, I drove home like the next day, like straight through, hired attorneys on the way. And I sat with my wife and we cried for a moment. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, you know, I don't know how long I'm going, but I don't expect you to wait for me. She said- Tell me, this is the next day you knew mm -hmm. you were gonna go to jail? Yes, yeah, so I had already hired attorneys. So um, my wife told me like, don't be ridiculous. I said, I do. We're gonna be married forever. Whether it's 10, 20 years, I'll be waiting. And I'll raise these kids for you. So, I mean, the strength of that, the, the friends that I had come and protect my family, it was that. You're, you're a very lucky man. In prison, how was the coffee? I actually gave up coffee. What? No, do not say that. You've restarted. Because you were on my best friend in the world, Tim Pool's show, Tim Cast IRL, and he is the sponsor of this great program. So, born of a desire for a bold coffee and a need to build companies that support American values, Cast Brew Coffee provides an alternative to that faceless corporate ecosystem and fosters a parallel economy that actually supports freedom. Try my own personal blend today. It's Alex Stein's Primetime Grind. Guys, it's dark roast, 100 percent organic ground coffee with two times the amount of caffeine. It's actually the strongest coffee known to man. My heart attack was not related to this. We just want to say that. It's uh, due to my eating, a uh, lack of eating carrots. Okay, that, so you guys just wrote that one. All right, very good. Just visit Casbrew.com, promo code PRIMETIME to save 10% off your purchase. That's Casbrew.com, promo code PRIMETIME. No, seriously, go buy this, dude. Tell them. Tell, give, give us a free plug, please, from the lectern guy. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Tim Pool is actually great people. So, and I know those products they make are always fantastic. He's one of the first people to give me a voice, give me a chance to speak. So, a lot of respect for Tim Pool and what he does. $50 Super Chat! Who sent that? <laughs> Robbie. 
Alex, you and Tiny killed it last Thursday at the Irving City Hall. Keep them coming. Thank you, Rob. And you know, it's funny. We did that. We had a great episode last Thursday. Jimmy, where were you last Thursday while we were out there grinding with Tiny and I? Were... Oh, he can have a mic. He can have a mic, but just no camera. Where where were you last Thursday when we were grinding really hard? Uh, I was I was passed out in a Vegas casino. So you were drunk in a casino being a degenerate while Tiny and Alex were fighting the culture war. Is that correct? Mm, yes. I was fighting a different culture war. What culture war were you fighting? Being drunk um, I got degenerate? approached by so many prostitutes, and I told them, be gone thoughts. I'm married. So I was I was uh, fighting the culture of depravity. Yeah, if a guy prostitute would have gone up to me and said, hey, let's go up to room 69. It would have been better content mean. if he would actually, you know. Yeah, I know, dude. And then, Jimmy, you just he doesn't know good content sometimes. So... Guys, support us. Use the promo code PRIMETIME or Tim is going to cancel our show or the Blaze is going to cancel it because we don't have sponsors. So we need you to support this damn coffee. And the proceeds that I make from this coffee are all being donated to the cat charity of Tim and I's choice. I'm going to donate part of it to Cat Matchers. He wants to donate it to one local to him. So it helps out cats. I know some guys don't like cats, but whatever. I love them. And I love dogs. We love dogs too. Okay, now we got to get to Myron. Is Myron on the line? Yeah, we're good to go. All right. Now, this next guy, you have a lot in common with him. He's also a gangster and was uh, America's Most Wanted at one time. The one, the only, last year's gangster, Myron Sugarman. And we have a special guest uh, uh, interviewer as well. Dad, bring one of these chairs. Come on. Myron, welcome to Primetime with Alex Stein. How are you doing, my friend? Okay. But I was never never most wanted by the government. Um, I, you I don't weren't? Know anybody. You were most any- wanted? We only want the hardened criminals. Do you see the lectern guy, Myron? Have you seen the guy that's on the show today? I just seen the fellow that you had next to you with the long hair. Yeah, he was, did you see on January 6th? He was here, Dad, come in. He was, he was on the- I remember, I remember January 6th very well. One of, a, a very good friend of mine went, was at that uh, convention. Yeah, well, this guy ended up doing a lot of federal time, and I thought it'd be good to bring you on because you kind of know the uh, weaponization of the Justice Department. And is it true that you actually got a lighter sentence because you went and hunted Nazis? Is that true, Myron? I don't know if I got a lighter sentence. The judge, and it was in two instances that uh, the judges certainly were impressed with the fact that I was Simon Wiesenthal's man in South American pursuit of Nazi war criminals, particularly for uh, the pursuit of, of Joseph Mengele, who was uh, known to have been seen in, in Paraguay. And I did finally reach some Holocaust survivors that had a direct connect, uh, encounter with the Mengele in Asuncion, Paraguay. And of course, all that information was verified, authenticated, and so forth, and sent to Wiesenthal, who sent it to Mossad. And uh, by the time that the information was finally caught up with, um, supposedly, Mangala had died off the shores of uh, Pernambuco in Brazil. But well, Myron, um, I want to say this. A lot of people might not know Joseph Mengele was the most one of the most disgusting people in the Holocaust. He was a doctor and he would he was obsessed. I did a re- book report on this in sixth grade. He was obsessed with twins. One of the uh, experiments that he liked to do, he'd like to take a twin's arm and try to put it on the other twin. He would try to take body parts. He, he would try to do he was really Mengele. I actually thought he was a pretty smart guy. I'm not saying he was, but he was really into eyes. He wanted to be able to do an eye transplant, stuff they couldn't do. And he would do this with no anesthesia, particularly on children. So he's the most disgusting, repugnant human being of all time. But he went and runs away to Paraguay. We know he got away. What about the conspiracy that Hitler made it out of the bunker and that him and Ava Braun and his dog didn't really die? What about that conspiracy, Myron? Listen, I I really, all those things are, of course, are are, uh, stories that, that we we don't want to waste our valuable time on your important program talking mm-hmm. about things like that because we really don't know. But what we do want to talk about, Alex, and I spoke to uh, spoke to your father. He's quite a gentleman. We have a lot of we have a lot of mutual friends, a lot of mutual friends. And what we really want to talk about is the history of the Jewish mob and the, the remarkable. Myron, I thought Jews, I thought Jewish men weren't allowed to be in the mob. I thought La Casa Nostra. You have to be of Italian, no. Okay, so now you're not going to interrupt me until I I, I give you permission to interrupt me. <laughs> you want to know about the history of the Jewish mob? 
and the remarkable contributions that they made for the betterment of the of the Jewish people pertaining to several very important things. Uh, I don't know if you're a young fellow, Alex, you may not know, and a lot of the fellows that are watching may not know, but the, the, the Jewish mob fought the American Nazi party in the 1930s, just like we have rising anti-Semitism today in the United States. We didn't, we don't have a Jewish mob like we had in the 90 years ago that fought the American Nazi party, the brown shirts that fought the silver shirts of William Dudley Belly and fought the black shirts in England, known as the BUF, British United Fascists, led by Sir Oswald Mo uh, Mosley. Um, the, 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 the Jewish mob, including Meyer Lansky, Abner Longies, Wilman, Dave Berman, great prize fighter, Barney Ross, even Jack Ruby, whose name was Jack Rubenstein, and your father knows him, yes. or knew him. All right. He was a Jewish hero. He fought the Nazis in Chicago during the 1930s. He was part of the Jewish mob. Now, in addition to that. Um, well, Myra, and, I'm not trying to cut you off. That's a pretty big deal. Jack Ruby being part of the Jewish mob and that he shot and killed Lee Harvey Oswald. Don't you think that's a huge deal? Well, that, well now you're Alex. Now you're making now you're making a, a potential connection between the Jew, between the mob uh, because Jack Ruby belonged to Chicago and everything that went on in Dallas, Texas, answered to Chicago, as you may or may not know. And the question is, what was Jack Ruby doing in the police station in Dallas on that Sunday, the day that uh, he killed uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, which everybody saw on television? Well, well, and, and then there's a conspiracy that say about Jack Ruby is that they say the official story is that he killed J he killed Lee Harvey Oswald because he was such a JFK fan, but yet he never went to a JFK rally and was not at the Grassy Knoll and didn't even he loved JFK so much he didn't even go to the event the day I, before. I, I I frankly think that that's a lot that was bullshit. The, uh, the 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 possibility the reason the reasons we'll never know. Uh, for some reason, there was never the. Uh, I'm thinking of the uh, Supreme Court justice that had the commission in charge of the commission. Oh, yeah, the the I mean, the, yeah, the JFK, the Warren Commission was a joke. Or, that's right, the Warren Commission. So it, it just doesn't make any sense that he was a fan of, of JFK and he went to the kill Lee Harvey, was it? Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't register. It doesn't register logically. And if anybody understands anything about Cosa Nostra, that certainly doesn't make any sense whatsoever. There seems to definitely have been. But again, uh, these are things that we we can only speculate on. We can use our common sense based upon experience and knowing how uh, things work that to say, OK, that that doesn't play well in, in, the, in the minds of uh, intelligent people. Now, um, getting on with the Jewish mob and the Italian mob, they were very instrumental in protecting against sabotage and espionage in World War II, protecting the uh, New York Harbor and the entire East Coast because they had control over the longshoremen. And uh, Those are all union guys. The, the, that's why it's important, the longshoremen. They're heavy union people. So if you control them, you control the ports. Well, except uh, not only that, but uh, the union, but they belong to the mob. The, the, uh, the, there were two ethnic groups that were longshoremen, one being the Italians, and they were controlled by a guy by the name of Joe Sox Lanza, and the others were the Irish. That they were controlled by Eddie McGrath, and both answered ultimately to the to, to Lucky Luciano. Now, Lucky Luciano at that time, <clears throat> it was Meyer Lansky that the Department of Navy approached Meyer Lansky and asked him to please use his influence with Lucky Luciano to, uh, well, actual fact was that they, they asked him to for use his influence over the longshoremen, to which Meyer Lansky said, oh, wait a minute, I don't have that kind of influence. The guy that's got the influence is the guy that Thomas Dewey, who eventually ran for president of the United States of America, at that time was a special prosecutor, in, in New York prosecutor, um, had framed Lucky Luciano on, on charges of... Uh, uh, promoting prostitution, he sentenced him to third. He he lost a trial and was sentenced to thirty fifty years for being and a pimp. Sent, 
for being a pimp. Is that for correct? Promoting, for promoting prostitution, but it was political. Uh, Dewey wanted to become the governor of the state of New York, so he went against uh, Dutch Schultz. He went against Le Lepke Bokalter, against Dillinger, uh, against everybody. Uh, and so, in doing so, in doing so, um, Lucky Luciano was sent to Dannemore, which was a, a terrible prison up in the border between Canada and New York. And uh, ultimately, Meyer Lansky convinced them that it would be a good patriotic act to cooperate with the Department of Navy, even though no deal was on the table. Ultimately, the mob told Dewey that they would throw the weight behind him for president, the governor. And Dewey agreed to it, and in the process, uh, gave uh, him a, a governor's pardon on the condition that he not remain in the United States. And lucky Luciano went back to Sicily. And we're in a, in a very difficult time right now, as far as Jews are concerned, both here in the United States and Israel. And it's very interesting that, and I'm pleased to be on your show. My son, my youngest son, thinks you're terrific, and told me you're going to have a Great interview with this man. He yeah. likes you very Sonny, much. Sonny, it's good. Well, let me ask. My dad wants to ask a question. This is the, la the one of the questions that goes back to the Nazi hunting thing. And, and, you know, Operation Paperclip, after World War II, we brought some of the top Nazi spies. Even Warner von Braun is a guy that ran the NASA program here in America. He also was a rocket scientist that made rockets that killed Polish people in Poland. So you hunted them. What about the Nazis that got to come over here and live scot-free and, and get paid by the Americans like they're Venezuelan immigrants? <laughs> um, Alex, um, I'm, 50, I'm 86 years of age, all right? One of the things that we learn in life is there's nothing exactly to one extreme or the other. It's neither black and it's neither white. It's all kinds of shades of gray. And there's all kinds of compromises that we all make in life uh, in order to adjust it because we're mortal. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody would have said to me, who I am one of the most avid, proud Jews, Zionists, and so forth, should they bring over that very famous um, rocket scientist uh, to the United States and to use him to help uh, the United States in terms of technology and so forth, the uh, future uh, weapons, I would have been the first person to say yes. Mm. Uh, let me let me share a very interesting story with you, Mossad. Mossad, and I can't remember the name of the Nazi, but he was the most vicious son of a bitch on the face of the earth that the actual, um, and he was living at that time in Syria. It was either in Syria, yes, he was living in Syria, and the Israeli Mossad reached out for this guy after the war and assured him that they would not kill him. And they employed him for the purpose of him working as a spy for the state of Israel. Mm. And he brought them incredible uh, intelligence on what Syria and other nations of the Arabs were doing in terms of, um, of strategy to uh, destroy Israel. It's a, an incredible story. I'll look it up, and I'll, I, I no, can't remember all the— Mossad is so powerful. Have you heard this conspiracy, Myron? Jeffrey Epstein, the world's most prolific sex trafficker, very close friends with the Obamas, that he, he had Ghislaine Maxwell. Her father's a guy by the name of Robert Maxwell. When he died, he fell off his ship. He got a authentic Israeli funeral— do you think there's any connection with Jeffrey Epstein, Mossad, and the royal family, his best friend, Prince Andrew? I, I, I don't think so, but I know the story of Robert Max, Maxwell. He, he, was, he worked for Mossad. Here, here's another interesting story, Alex. Um, you, there was a bank. There was a, a, a Jew from Budapest that was a hero during the Budapest occupation, World War II. Um, Tibor Rosenbaum. Uh, what he did was he put on Nazi uniform. Of course, spoke German. He was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And, and he went all, around cool. to all Jewish homes and um, without telling the, the Jews that he, was, um, that he was a Jew, 
He would tell him in German, raus, raus in wagon gehen. Get out, get out, get in the trucks. And they thought that they were on the way to the, the freight cars to go to the concentration camps. But actually, he, he put many of them safe houses throughout all of Budapest. After the war, Tidal, uh, 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 Tibor Rosenbaum went to Vienna, not to Vienna, I'm sorry, went to Geneva, Switzerland. He opened up a bank called the International Bank du Credit. That bank was an excellent bank. Geneva, Switzerland, but it had two unique clients. One of the clients was Mossad. The other client was the mob. Why the mob? <clears throat> what was the mob? Uh, what did they use the bank for? Uh, Meyer Lansky's organization in Miami used to receive the money on the rake off, the skim from Las Vegas. The money would go to, to Miami. Uh, Meyer Lansky's organization would break down the money for each of the various um, deposits. Uh, this one goes into this bag, this bag. Better. And a fellow by the name of um, Sylvan, I think it was Sylvan Pepperman or something, that, who was, I think, related to Debo Rosenbaum, but worked for him, came to, to Miami they would pick up the suitcases with all the cash in it and put it on the uh, Swiss airplanes. And those flights would go to Geneva, Switzerland, and the monies would be deposited in the bank called the Bank de Credit. So, again, it, it, the bank, of course, operated according to the laws of Switzerland and so forth and so forth. But uh, where there's the human being, where you have Everybody, you're going to have everybody, everybody and anybody can be seduced and to some extent or another. It's the most, and you're not going to live this life in exact to the perfection of this is the law and so forth and so forth. Look, it, I went to jail. I had three state cases, three federal cases for uh, uh, illegal gambling. And last case, I went federal cases. Uh, I was charged with uh, operating uh, video poker machines, lucky eight lines, so forth. Now, you today can sit in your living room in New Jersey, mm -hmm. you watch television, and a pretty girl gets on television, and she shows you the machines that I went to jail for 19 months <laughs> and shows you how to play my machines. All right? Now, that... <laughs> That's Look the most the popular content, Myron. Gambling content is everywhere with the app. Everywhere is a casino now, literally. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. You can sit in your living room. You can sit mm -hmm. on the toilet of your bathroom. And you can go broke playing gambling. And it's being promoted by the United States of America and by every state within the United States of America. So it's the human element. You just have to accept it. There's certain things that we, we just... Uh, we're just human. We're mortal. Yeah. There is no such. There is no such thing as the perfect human being. You're right. Uh, Myron, my dad's got a question. You got to. Well, Myron, I'd like to mention uh, that you shared with me, and I'd like the audience to know uh, your son's a rabbi. What a great family right. you have, and what a wonderful role model you were, even for your little small blip that you had. But I was Dutch Schultz. Was he a Jewish gangster? Who's Dutch Schultz? Actual fact. Because his, his name, name was Flugenheimer, Arthur, correct? His name was Arthur Flegenheimer. He was the son of religious German Jews. Right, that's what I the, Who is this guy? Let Myron Arthur, tell you Dutch, who Dutch Schultz. Well, we only have Myron Schultz. for a couple more minutes. Myron. I'm who Dutch Schultz well, no, no, I'm not even worried about Dutch Schultz. Hey, Myron, did the Jewish mafia start the gambling in Las Vegas, or was it the... Because they say it was the Jewish mafia, not the Italian mafia. No, it was absolutely the Jews. Yeah. It was... Uh, well, it was a combination. Actually, it was Benny Siegel that, Benny, Benny that Siegel. Had, the vision, had the vision and uh, got himself into trouble uh, as a result of uh, over over investing in the Flamingo. A lot of that money was stolen money, and he was involved with that Virginia Hill. And Myron, ultimately, did, did you have to do a ritual? Did you ever have to do a blood ritual or anything like that? That's, <laughs> that's Italian. That's so the Jewish mafia, you don't have to do I didn't know. I mean, maybe they do something where you eat it, cook the, the, a chicken or something. I don't know. Rip its head off and drink the blood. That, your question is a good question. And I'll tell you the reason why. 
by the by the Sicilians, the Neapolitans, by the Calabrese, by the Barese, and Sardinians, and so forth. The it's Sopranos. A cult- okay. It's a cultural. Sorry. It's cultural. Whereas with the Jews, it's strictly one generation. We 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 the the Jew doesn't want his kid to become a gangster. He wants him to become a lawyer, a journalist, a, a professor, a doctor, and so forth. He, he, he does he, a banker, a hedge fund. It's not, they don't glamorize it. It's not cultural. We they don't rate. We don't raise our kids. My kids. I didn't raise my kids to be gangsters, and I didn't wasn't raised to be a gangster. But it was a different time, a different generation, a different history, and I was just brought into it. And and um, I would say circumstances that. But um, I was like an outlaw. I really wasn't a gangster gangster. I, I understood the, the laws, the rules, the regulations of the underworld. Um, I observed them to, uh, uh, for practical reasons. Uh, once you step outside the law, you're in somebody else's world. And, uh, Did you ever and, have to kick? You don't- let, me, let me ask one last question, Myron. The word Nazi today, it's thrown around. Everybody's a Nazi. Everybody's a Nazi. You've actually hunted Nazis like Mangala. Do you think people are using that word incorrectly today? Do you think they use it too much? They have no idea what it means. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's, uh, it's just a word that the, the, the people today are really dummies. Absolute morons. <laughs> you have today people marching with the Palestinians. All right, they have no idea, foggiest idea what the hell they're marching for. And the saddest part of the story is, you got Jewish kids that are marching with Palestinians protesting against Israel. So, the the the, the level of knowledge that we have today in this world is pitiful. It's the, it's it's a disgrace. People just are walking around like zombies. Burn. No, we got one last yeah. question. What do you want to ask him? Burn. When you were in New York or wherever you had your machines, did you have to kick back or send money to a organized New York family? And did you have a first-hand knowledge of the? Did you get to talk to the boss? Did you kick directly to the Godfather type person or to one of his capos? Well, <clears throat> I I was raised. From an early age, my father was partners with Jerry Catino, who was the acting boss of the Genovese crime family. Wow. A man, in my opinion, my father's opinion, could have run the Pentagon. In my opinion, observing the man, I would have thought that this man could have been the best president of the United States of America. Now, uh, after my father passed away, I started to operate illegal gambling throughout all New York, New Jersey, everywhere. And... Um, I was immediately recognized for my talents to be able to make money. And at the same time, I taught so many people how to make money in the gambling machine business. And that, by the way, was probably the reason that I'm alive today and on uh, Alex's uh, show, because I taught people I wasn't greedy. I helped a lot of people make a lot of money, and that was good. Uh, kicking, Kicking in. If you're in that world, you need a rabbi. You need to have somebody that you can that you answer to. And you need the more that you pay, the better your protection. It's strictly a, a business transaction. Uh, you want, yes. Of course, people like me. You can see by my character, by, by my demeanor. I'm very respectful. I'm educated. I give respect, I get respect. And people respected me, but you have to understand that in life you pay the you want good good um, services. You want the best quality. You want to go to the best restaurant. You want to stay at the best hotel. You want the best protection, the best insurance. You pay for it, and the more you paid, the better that you were respected. So it meant if you had disputes over territory. Uh, as far as the streets are concerned, all you had to simply say is, gentlemen, um, I do have proper station identification. And that stopped everything. The water stopped flowing. <laughs> and, and people would have to go find out who you were. 
and uh, are you really who you claim to be? And if there was any kind of a dispute, it would go all the way upstairs, and upstairs would take good care of me because I, in turn, took good care of upstairs, as I explained to you before. It's all a matter of just good business sense. And Myron, speaking of station identification, I appreciate you coming on. We're going to have you on hopefully again very soon so we can even talk more. Um, We'd like to have you at the studio, Myron, as, as our guest. Yeah, we can do. We can book him after the show. We can book him after the show. Thank you uh, so much, Dad. Uh, thank you, Myron, for a great interview. Uh, where, where is the studio? Dallas, Texas. Irving, Texas. Las Colinas. Oh, be, Beautiful. Be my place. It'd be my pleasure to come out there with you. It's We're going to get you in the studio. Audience. The chat loves you. They love you. They say, Rabbi, gambling rabbi, they love it. You know, they're, they're, they want they want to know more information. So, But we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. you can do a question and answer. Yeah, with we can the figure this out. Time. That's what I'm saying. We can figure this out next time. We can, we can, uh, we can produce a show after the show's over. Myron, thank you so much. You're a minch, as they say. Is that correct? And where can people you. find you and support you before you go? What's that? Where can people find you and support you, Myron, before you leave? Um, well, um, let them look up. Uh, I'm a pod, I have Facebook. Yeah, I'm on Facebook, and there's all kinds of YouTubes about We'll me. put the link to your Facebook. So everybody, go follow Myron, and we're going to have you in studio. We can really dive deep into all the Nazis you hunted, Myron. You're the man. Thank you so much for coming on this evening, sir. Thank you, Myron. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All the best. God, God bless you guys. Talk to you, you soon. All right. Thank you, Dad, for that. That was great. What did you think of Myron? You liked Myron? Very, very much. What do you think of freaking Adam? He's awesome. <laughs> we, we got different generations, Adam and Myron. We got the whole deal. I know, but can you believe that the federal government did, it would do that to him like that? He, I think it's really, really bad what happened to him. And what do you think about how they didn't do anything to BLM people when they burned down all of those auto zones? It's a bad deal. None of those people had to get in trouble. No, no, it's terrible what they did. And then you know this is my dad's a bail bondsman, career bail bondsman. Did you know that Kamala Harris donated to a bail bond fund to get the people out during sure. the BLM prison? I know they made the bonds. Yep. So how would that be in the bail bond business? Do you think that's legal? Well, they put up cash bonds. They yeah, I mean, it's they, legal, but yeah, I'm saying, don't you think that's kind of weird? that they uh, sent them, Well, they had cash bonds. They sent the money to the law firms, and the law firms put up cash for them. I know, but they're just bailing. It's basically like saying, like, you get a get-out-of-jail-free card. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. Well, you would have to go admire, to jail first to get, get out of jail for your card. And Dad, look at this picture. So this is the picture, and you have this hung up in your house. Please tell me you did. Hey, Dad, might as well just finish the show. You know, let's sit here. What, um, I can't see it. Uh, you see right there on the screen, or is him? That's the picture of him holding the, the lectern. Oh yeah, oh absolutely. That's I've seen that picture a bunch. Of course. Yeah. So tell us this picture, and you said right after this picture, what happened? You dropped the thing. Uh, so I actually carried it about 20 yards. Um, it wasn't in someone's room, didn't break a door down, just it was sitting out in the open. Picked it up, carried it 20 yards to the center of the rotunda, set it down for a photo op, gave a short speech, and left. Oh, so you did kind of a fake speech when you yes. set it down? I called it a, what was it, a LARPing politics. Can you recite some of that speech? It was three lines, very succinct. It was um, where you should have new order, there should be no more treason, no more traitors, and we should vote on one budget item at a time. Wow, I like that. But the, but you said what they kind of sounded like New World Order ish a little bit at the beginning. Well, I mean, how about a, how about a reestablishing of what the Constitution is supposed to be? Speaking of the New World Order, keep this on. Was 9 11 an inside job? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Second one was a moon landing real or fake? I'm on the fence about that one. Okay, he's on the fence. Shape of the <laughs> earth, round like a basketball or flat like a Pizza Hut pizza? I have been in space, can't tell you. You can't out pizza the hut. It's a pizza. All right, no. But seriously, you know, I do think that you were prosecuted unfairly. I know I already asked you how do you stay positive, but I guess, like, you can't even make money right now. I mean, how are you so happy? Seriously, tell me, are you on drugs? Are you, are you drinking? Like, how are you such a happy guy? I'm definitely, uh, I used to be a raging alcoholic, but now I don't rage anymore. You don't drink anymore? I rage. Um, so... We, <laughs> <laughs> I got that one. Okay. So um, it's it's given me an opportunity to do some really good things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm starting a charity. We are actually we're feeding kids who have parents who are in prison because of J6. They're not supposed oh, wow. to be there, and these kids did nothing wrong. Yeah. So you can have your opinion about J6ers. You can say you know they were violent. It was a riot. But someone needs to take care of these kids. And we can say that about a lot of people who are in prison. Did you show the judge? You say, hey, I have kids to take care of. Did they have any sympathy whatsoever? 
No, they did not actually. Did not. Because kill. they don't realize a kid is going to have a stain. His dad's in jail. It's causing him tra trauma. They could have given me house arrest. Easily. There are a multitude of things they could have done. And this judge historically has done house arrest. I'm one of the only people who's actually sent to prison. But it wasn't about. It wasn't about me. It was about sending a message to everyone else. You don't get to make fun of us. You can't come in the ivory tower and make us look ridiculous. But maybe they should stop being so ridiculous. Do you think it was because you were laughing in that po that photo? Yes. You know, because they want to make it seem like it was the most violent uh, event, terrorist attack since 9-11, which is provably false. So you, because you made fun of them, and that they get mad at that. That's why you like my content, because I go viral making fun of politicians. Yes. They can't stand it. What did your PSI say? What did the probation department write about you? What should have been done? So the PSI, oh God, that was a long time ago. What does PSI stand for? It's a pre-sentencing report. So they yeah. go through, they look at your, um, your money, your assets, previous charges, your family life. They have a, a couple of content people, let's say content character, and they basically assess, are you a dangerous person? Yeah. The recommendations were, were very, very low. They, um, they, they agree with the government that I should go to jail for 90 days, but I mean, it's, it's, it's all a big circle. You know, well, they sure. did uh -huh. recommend the 90 day sentence. Yes, they even did though, agree even with though you didn't have a, any violent attacks, no felonies or anything, no. they still recommended that you would need jail. And most people, when they have their first felony debt, is that right? They usually offer you probation. Is that usually the standard operating? Not, not in the federal system normally. They have that PSI has the guidelines of what you, uh, it's kind of written, it's because they want uniform sentencing yes. in, that, in that arena. Uh, their sentencing Eight guidelines, court. they're mandatory, they're mandatory maximums, mandatory minimums, you have to, st there's, there's starting points. The PSI sets a starting point for where you're going to land when they do sentence you. What do you think uh, is going to happen to Puff Daddy when he goes to federal prison? <laughs> I think he'll be a CI. I mean, they did he get R. Kelly? They did get R. Kelly. You know, uh, so. they, R. Kelly, I know, he was peeing on people. I mean, that's, I mean, that's pretty bad. What do you think, okay, before you even say anything, Isabella DeLuca... She has just been get off. Okay, yeah, just just leave like that in the middle of the show. That's good. Thank you, Dad. Okay, um, Isabel Deluca. Bye. bye, Dad. Isabel Deluca is uh, going to jail. She is the MAGA influencer. Uh, she's known for baking cakes and kind of spilling stuff on her chest and smiling, and that's the kind of content she makes. And uh, people like it. Obviously, she's popular. Do you think that she's being targeted? I mean, it's interesting because it's they've known she's been a part of this for a very long time, right? Yes. They they know everyone who's been there at this point. It seems to me like they're just cherry picking people to get the narrative continued to be talked about, right? They could have picked her up two, three years ago now. Why now? It's to it's to cause a ruckus, to cause a stir again. Remember January sixth? These people who are speaking, who are being loud on Twitter, these people who are you know MAGA country, and there we have to silence them. Look at how awful they are. So I think they actually have a schedule to arrest these people. Wow. So, you, but but they're just going to continue to go because now they're saying they're going to just charge people that were just outside. They've established a perimeter, yes. So trampling grass is now a chargeable offense. No. Why? Because they count that as what? As uh, picketing and parading, I guess. It's it's a breach. It's breach of capital. So just grounds. walking on the. And you know it's crazy because I went viral for calling AOC a big booty Latina, and now they put a white rope where you can't even walk on those steps where the congressmen mm -hmm. and women go in. Um, but I, I guess Such my point is, cowards. Yeah, but what I'm saying is what I did, I think, is much more criminal than you. I mean, I don't think I did anything criminal, but I, I just asked a question and made a joke. But you literally just walked and you and I both done tours after the fact. So yes. you're allowed to it's, it's open to the public. You're allowed, literally you're allowed to go there. It's, yes. it's not even a hard deal. I just walked in the day of. I didn't even have a reservation. I found out I went in the wrong door and that's what they're upset about. Now, the door was open. And everyone was walking through. It's my first protest, so I just followed the protest inside. And I've seen dozens of protests inside that building. People aren't arrested. That's what I'm saying. People I've seen protests all the time. Years. They run in people's offices. I mean, and, and they don't. And nothing happens. Did you see Ray Epps, or did you see anybody that you thought was a agent provocateur, purposely trying to make it look more dangerous and worse than it was? Honestly, I wasn't looking for it. I, I was. It was my first protest. I wouldn't know what to look for. No Antifa vibes from anybody. We did see. Um, I was there the night before. I saw Alex Jones speak in the park. And I think this is where Baked Alaska actually had the video of Ray Epps telling people yeah. tomorrow we had to go inside. And there was a BLM protest happening. I found out I was in a group of Proud Boys. I'd never met in my life. So we, I did see Gavin some McInnes. of that. Shout out Gavin McGinnis. I did see some of that before. We also saw National Guard posted everywhere all over the streets. As I'm marching to the Capitol the next day, I'm actually texting my, uh, my jiu-jitsu professor, Sonny. And I'm like, I wonder if the National Guard's going to be there. Are they going to use rubber bullets or is it going to be live ammunition? Because this is 100,000 people that's marching down the street. Yeah. When I got there, I was confused. No, no one was there. No National no Guard. We're just all gone conveniently that day. There were Humver, Hummies, Hummers um, parked all over the road. 
All he rode late the night before. No National Guard. No National Guard the them? next day. Nothing. And that's a conspiracy is that, what is it, Trump wanted more and Nancy Pelosi said no more National Guard? This is, this is what they say. Wow. Wow, wow, woozy. I mean, it's just, I feel bad for Isabella DeLuca. If you just had to guess Monday morning quarterback, do you think she's going to have to do some jail time? Uh, what did they bring her on? Four charges? I think it's a misdemeanor theft charge. I think all four misdemeanors. Yep, yeah. so the misdemeanor theft charge, I think, has a maximum of, I want to say it's six months. Mm -hmm. It depends on if she's been charged with things before. It depends on if she takes a plea deal. Now, if she's smart, she will take a plea deal and not fight this. She will not go to trial. Yeah, my buddy Luke Coffey is now, he, he went to trial. Now he's on a bench trial, so he's waiting to hear back. He, if he, how he tells me, and I hope Luke sees this, is that they offered him like 18 months or they yes. offered him a couple years and he turned it down. Now I'm looking back. If he would have done the time, he'd be out by now. Yes. And I can also say a lot of it is these, a lot of J6ers are getting attorneys that are not Qualified. doing the best things for their yes. clients. They are giving them advice and I won't name them because I don't want to be sued. Yeah. But telling your clients go to trial, DC is definitely a place to get a fair shake. No. If people are looking for attorneys, I always recommend recommend mine anytime I go on a show. It is uh, David Bigney. And he and, helped you a lot. David Bigney yes, helped you a lot. Yes, David Bigney and uh, Dan Eckert. Uh, these people are fantastic. They told me right up front, this is what's going to happen. This is what you have to do. They were honest with you. Yes. You're probably going to serve some time. The biggest one we're going to get. You want to say you going. told me how much. You want to say how much you spent on legal fees? $100,000. Could not raise a penny to help with it either. Government said we couldn't have any GoFundMes. <laughs> couldn't have a Give, Send, Go. Nothing. Gosh, that makes me sick. God is good, though. God, God uh, is good, God and is God good is good, and you're going to make way more than $100,000 in your life. I mean, maybe not instantly. Obviously, you're going to have some troubles, but I, I, you will, quote-unquote, get that money back one way or another, but it's still the stress and anxiety has to be worse than the $100,000, right? It was the uh, year and a half on, uh, on pre-sentence release where I had to be in the Middle District of Florida. Uh, they drug gave, testing? Drug testing, random drug testing. Not a drug charge, random drug testing. Uh, they just, they wanted to see my junk. I don't know. And you had to pee in front of somebody? Oh, yeah, they gave you like this. How hardcore is it? It's, I made eye contact the whole time, you know? So you just sit there and, like, you go into a special urinal, and then, they're, I mean, because I do think that's weird. Every J6, or I guess that's just how the federal government does it, but, like, they're giving everybody, so somebody could smoke a joint and theoretically mm -hmm. violate their probation and have to serve their whole sentence? Now, I want to say it's actually in the, um, in the USSC that it's actually part of uh, pre-trial release is two mandatory drug tests to get to check in within 24 hours. There's like a whole list of things that everyone has to do. Do you fail for alcohol in the drug test? Like, can you have alcohol? Oh, I, I did have alcohol. I had lots of it. Okay, so you were allowed to have it or were you not? Yes. Okay, yes. so you were le legally allowed to have alcohol. There's no marijuana, no ketamine, no Viagra, no uh, boomers, <laughs> zoomers, acid, LSD, <laughs> ecstasy, molly, ketamine. Did I say ketamine? You can do mushrooms, though, because they don't test the They don't test? Right. So you're, you're a mush head? Were you mushing? No, I just know that's a fact. Wow. Write that down. So uh, if you do have to go through <laughs> federal uh, probation, start popping mushroom caps. And those are uh, mushrooms we eat. Uh, I can't even name. What's an edible mushroom? Kermini mushroom. Is that a thing? Shiitake. Shiitake. We're talking about shiitake mushrooms. Portobello. Portobello. I can't even. Portobello or portobella? What is the proper sexual term of a mushroom? Tomato, tomato. Well, I don't want to misgender because we can't misgender on... <laughs> Jimmy, could we get in trouble for misgendering a mushroom? Are there oyster mushrooms? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I love this camera angle. Okay, real quick, before we go, can we do a, a survey real quick if Brandon can cook one up? Do you guys like having Jimmy's camera off? I'd like yes or no. I'd like to see. Because <laughs> the chat is going to decide, Jimmy. It's out of my hands now, so... Uh, the, the guilty, I like Diddy guilty, 92% yes, but the chat rats, you guys get to decide. We can just keep Jimmy's camera like this where Jimmy can just randomly talk on the mic. I like it because he can't really get any content, so he has to focus on the show. Or do you guys not like it? Do you miss Jimmy's mug? I mean, Jimmy did shave his head for the show. He has paid a lot of uh, prices, but has he paid the ultimate price? The ultimate price is dying for the show. Would you be willing to die for the show, Jimmy? No. Okay. <laughs> Serve a little federal prison you know, It's funny, it, Jimmy did, and we want to say it is safe and effective, did get vaccinated just to go to Europe. <laughs> That's true. Oh, Europe's That's true. Don't show enough. Jimmy's face, but explain, <laughs> confirm that, Jimmy. It was worth it. Oh, all right. We'll see in 10 years. We'll check with you. We'll check in in 10 years. I hope you've gotten some blood work done recently. You have? I got blood work done. And how recently. was your blood work? Blood work's great. 
It's good. Did you lose weight or get in shape in jail uh, at so all? So I put on 20 pounds before I went in, and I lost 25. So you kind of came out about mm -hmm. even. Yep. Because you were stress eating. I stress eat, and I'm not even going to jail. Oh, I just knew the food was going to be garbage. So I just ate everything I wanted to. Tell us some of the prison recipes that you ate that you actually enjoyed. <laughs> oh, we made a uh, moonfungo. We made cheesecake. We made uh, pizzas. We made ice cream. How would you make the pizza? Uh, the pizza. So <sighs> it's not a great pizza. So they have a thing called a stinger, where basically you take the bottom metal plate off of an iron. Mm -hmm. You insulate a trash can, duct tape, you know, clothes, under clothes. Yeah, plastic trash can. Fill it up with water. Or yep. metal. Okay, plastic pl trash can. Yep, you fill it up with, uh, with water. And then you get plastic trash bags. You toss your food in the plastic trash bag, knot it off, toss it in the water, drop the stinger, the iron plate. Yeah, from to the make it hot. Heats it up, boils it. So you can do things like make rice, move fungal, all sorts of fun stuff. But how did you make a pizza? You'd boil a bunch of flour? That you use the stinger to, um, so they put sell. like on top of it or something? They sell um, uh, like quesadilla wraps from commissary. So oh, there are, you so can kind of like piecemeal together. You can kind of piecemeal stuff together, but they would actually take all the tortillas, water them down, make an actual like dough ball, and then roll that out. Oh, I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And they could kind of cut it a little and make it a big. Yeah, I see. I they'd add water to it. Wow. All right, man. This has been a great episode. I know we talked to Myron for a while. I'm sorry we almost didn't get enough, but tell the people where they can find you and support you. Um, I am exclusively on Twitter. I, I do not Facebook. I do Instagram. It is Lectern Leader. And it's L-E-C-T-E-R-N-L-E-A-D-E-R, -E -E Lectern Leader. And I just want to say, everybody needs to go on Twitter right now and follow you. Because, listen, I, I, I know I keep saying I keep kissing your butt in this much, but you are an American hero. You are a mortar. You went and you were the face of January 6th other than Jacob Chansley. You were, like, the funny face of it. He was, like, the fake, scary. You know, they tried to make him seem like he was, like, the devil or something. And because of that, because of your humor, because of your good sense of humor, it put a target on your back. So I'm happy that the federal government did not defeat you and institutionalize you because you still have that great smile and that great positive energy. Thanks for having me on, Alex, man. I just had to always have a great time with you. Did you have a good time? I had a great time. The show went by too fast. I right? felt like I heard like a whole Scorsese novel that hasn't been produced yet. I know. Fantastic. We'll have you back. Anytime you're in the area, we want to have you on. And uh, remember, guys, go to cashbrew.com and get some of this coffee. You quit, but you're going to start drinking again, right? Coffee? I will, I will drink a cup for Tim. Yeah. For Tim. This is not for me. For Tim. <laughs> All right, guys. We end the show the same way every time with the freestyle finale. Oh, I just spilled some coffee. <laughs> DJ, hit that beat. <laughs> Lectern guy going to jail. That motherfucker can't make no bail. Federal crime did his time. Now he's with Alex Stein. Going to rhyme. Always on the grind. It is his time to shine. Put the camera on him. Jimmy's never gonna win. Jimmy won't be on the screen. Alex is way too mean. You need to step it up. Stop putting liquor in your cup and going to Vegas and gambling on games. You need to focus on this damn show. Now I have to freaking go because I need to know if you support this channel. What do you support your family, Jimmy? I need you to give me 125,000 for shit or else. Just like you chat rat, like and subscribe. Peace, good night.